Okay, in today's video, we are going to be working on building this exploration of the Ds in D&D, which is looking at the Great Axe and the Great Sword. So the Great Axe does 1d12 damage, and the Great Sword does 2d6. So what we're going to do is look at, like, essentially one does 1 to 12, and the other one does 2 to 12, but in a different way. So we're going to see, try and see if we can simulate a battle with these or a number of battles and see which one actually uh, comes out uh, ahead. All right, so let's go take a look. Now, there is a mathematical way to look at this, and we'll go through that at the end, but there is actually an experimental way, which is what we're going to simulate here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to install or get our random number generator online. So we're going to start by saying srand time zero okay and that will get everything going there now the big thing is that up here we're going to need to hash include some libraries because otherwise they uh, the computer won't know or the compiler won't know what those things are so we need time time dot h and we also have to hash include uh, the c standard library okay so once we've done this, what we can do is we can first start by setting our great axe damage. Okay, so we're going to say int uh, great axe dmg, so great axe damage is equal to, and then what we'll say is rand, okay, modulus max minus min plus one plus min. Now, this will work, but we have not actually set our max and min yet. So we have to say int max is equal to 12, and min is equal to 1. Now, up until this point, you may have seen it, uh, these declared on two separate lines, but if you're declaring variables all at once, then you can do them of the same type. You can do them on the same line, separated by a comma. All right, so we're going to run a test here. So we're just going to see out... Uh, great axe damage and we're just going to see if it actually works here all right and too few arguments oh i forgot time zero there we go okay so we got a one two eight twelve all right so it's looking pretty good i'm fairly confident that that is working correctly okay so what we'll do is we will say, uh, we'll put this part here, so uh, weapons test. All right, and we'll actually double end line this to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, and we'll say great axe. Great axe damage, like this. Okay, is great axe damage. Now, um, I don't have the exact worksheet here with me, so it might not look exactly the same, but that's okay. All right, those, the differences here will be just kind of inconsequential. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is actually do the same thing, but for the, um, but for the great sword. So we're going to do a similar thing. So we'll say int great sword dmg damage is equal to rand okay, modulus now if i say max minus min plus one what i will do then is it'll actually do a, a 1 to 12 because the max is 1 and the min is 12. so what i need to do is i need to do max say max uh, uh say we need to change these so we'll say max a for max for the axe okay and min a Right for the for the x, we'll have min s for so max s is equal to twelve six, okay, and min s is equal to one. All right, so here I'll just throw in some thing. We'll update this, okay, and this needs to be s s s. All right, so this because it's one to six will create a number between one and six, but I don't really want just a number between one and six. So what I'm gonna do is copy that and do it again. Okay, so I got one random number from one to six plus another random number from one to six, and that will give me a number from two to 12. All right, so 
I'm going to say C out. Great sword damage. Okay, and end line. All right, so we're going to run a test here and see if it works. Hopefully it does. Okay, so I got 1 and 12. All right, um, let's see, 8 and 9, 6 and 8, 9 and 10, 4 and 9. It seems to be working out 10 and 5 yet. So before, I kept on running a test because uh, the first one was always lower than the second one. But now I have one where it's higher than the second, so I'm confident that it's actually working. Okay. Let's take a look. So where do we go from here? Uh, we had to say which one won. So we're going to say if um, great axe damage is greater than great sword damage. Okay, then we're going to say C out uh, great sword or great axe wins. Okay, so there we go. End line. We have an else. Okay, so else if the great, what I'll do is I'll just actually copy this to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so but just change the sign. So, okay, and we actually could have just copied the whole thing. Oops. Okay, and this is for the great sword. Great sword wins. Okay, now else, now if neither one won, that means that it had to have been a tie. So then what I would just say is like a tie. All right, so let's run it a few times and see what happens. See if we can get one of each case, although I'm not going to keep going over and over again to get a tie. All right, so let's rebuild. Okay, so we have. Great sword wins. Okay, great sword wins. Great sword wins. Wow, okay. Great axe wins. Okay, and I would like a tie, but it's going to be very difficult to actually make that happen just on per like, you know, just from running because the odds of it is just very unlikely. Okay, so, anyways, but it looks like it's working. And I'm confident that everything looks okay. All right. So the next thing to do that we're going to do is run this test a thousand times. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say int counter is equal to, uh, z let's say zero. Okay. We're going to make a do while. Okay. So we're going to say do while counter is less than 1000. Now there's different ways you could write it and that's okay if you did it in a different way. Okay, so counter plus plus. Okay, and so this will loop a thousand times. Um, okay, so I'm going to put a message here. See out running 1000 trials. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually just simulate this again. All right, so what we need is we have to generate new numbers every time. If you don't generate new numbers every time, then it's just going to calculate the same numbers, and that's not really what we want. All right, so we're going to generate new numbers each time, and then we're going to use these if statements here. I really don't care about the ties that much. Okay, um, so what? Because really, what we're tracking is which one won more often than not. Okay, so I've got my if else. Okay, I, now I don't really want to print these out, okay? Because if I do, it's going to just create a massive list that's going to go so fast, and I'm not really going to read this anyways. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int uh, axe win is equal to zero, and int uh, sword win is equal to zero. And so if the axe came out ahead, instead of just outputting, I will say axe win plus plus. And if the sword came out ahead, right, then I will say sword win plus plus, right? And this will run a thousand times, and we'll see what, we'll see how many times each one won. Okay, so when we're done, we're going to say C out um, 
say results. So see out, and we'll make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so see out. We'll say great axe win count. And that's the axe wins. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. See out great sword win count. And that will be the sword win. Okay, and I made a mistake in my variable here because this is not wins, it's just win. All right, and let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so we have 415 and 485. Now, if the astute people here will notice that that only lands, that only comes to 900, and we ran, well, it says 100, but it's actually 1,000 trials. Right, so there we go. Okay, so what happened? All right, well, what would have happened then is we got a thousand ties. Okay, now we can test that by saying int ties is equal to zero. Okay, and then here, what I'll do is I'll just put out um, this test code here. And this is, we're not going to actually include this in our final product. Uh, I just want to verify that everything is working. Okay, so I'm going to say else. Ties plus plus. All right, and we'll run it again, see what happens. Okay, so in this case, we have 412 plus 503. That actually sums to 915, and we had 85 ties. So that actually seems to work out correctly. Let me run it again 419 plus 495. So that comes out to um, 914, right? So yeah, it looks like it's right. Okay, so the ties are fine. So what we'll do is instead of erasing this, we just comment this away because we're not really interested in it. But we try not to delete code unless we absolutely have to. All right. Okay. Now, after this, so we can see that the greatsword wins more often than not. All right. So um, that's really great. Now, the last part is to check the average damage that happens. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some new variables here. We'll say uh, axe damage is equal to zero, and int sword uh, damage is equal to zero. All right. Um, actually, we'll go. We'll call this total axe damage because we want to have descriptive variables. Okay, so total sword damage. All right. And what we're going to do is when we, no matter what we, what these actually are, we'll just add them up. Okay. So we'll say total sword damage is equal to total sword damage, uh, plus the great sword damage. So our total sword damage is going to be equal to what it was before plus the new damage that we're adding on. All right. Similarly, total axe damage is going to be equal to the total axe damage plus the great axe damage, so the new damage that's being added. Okay, and so what we can do is we can then say something like this, C out, um, let's put an end line there, a couple end lines to space things out, total, uh, average damage. Okay, um, so CO, actually, I will copy this line here to make it consistent. Okay, let's just see how it looks. Okay, so it looks okay. Uh, probably use like a little bit longer of a line, so just add like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, run it again. Okay, it looks okay. Maybe one more each. All right. So how do you calculate the average damage? Okay, well, what you do is you say C out. Okay, and we're going to say for the great axe. 
Okay, the average damage was going to be its total damage. Total axe damage. Now, we ran a thousand trials, so we're going to divide it by a thousand. All right. Now, something's going to happen here, and I'll explain what in a minute. Okay, so I just let me just write this out, and then I'll explain what's happening. So, great axe, great sword. Okay, so this is going to be total sword damage divided by a thousand. All right, and let's see. Okay, so we have six and seven. Now, it's highly unlikely that this just came to six and seven, right? So what actually happened, right? Well, it's actually just getting rid of the decimals. And the reason why it's getting rid of the decimals is because it's an integer, right? So what we have here is total axe damage, which is an integer, and we're dividing it by another integer to, and to the computer, that makes an integer. Same thing here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 0 0.0. Now, a thousand and a thousand point zero might seem the same to you, but to a computer now, you are telling it that this is integer divided by a double. And because it's an integer divided by a double, then we, uh, then it gives a double. All right. So we'll see how that changes the program. You can see now we've got the decimal places and at the very beginning of this task, I talked about whether or not this would actually make sense right, mathematically. I said we were doing it experimentally. Okay, well, if we look at it, the great axe does between 1 and 12 damage. So if you add 1 plus 12, that's 13, and you divide it by 2, right, that's going to be 6.5. So that means on average it does about 6.5 damage, right, and that's exactly what we'd expect. Now, for the great sword, um, it has a bell curve, right? And with the average at seven, the most likely the so the most likely number to roll when you're rolling two six-sided die is a seven. Now you could get an eight, for instance. That's the next most likely thing. But then equally likely is a six. And so what those do is they balance because they're exactly the same odds. They average each other out back to a seven, right? And then the same thing with a nine and a five. Right, so it's the chance of getting a nine is the same as getting a five, and so you have five plus nine is fourteen divided by two is seven. So the average all round on a D, on two dice, uh, two six sided dice is a seven, and so you can see experimentally we're actually getting really close to that. So it's almost six point five and seven. All right, run it again. Yeah, so six point six and six point nine. So all right, so very consistently you can see that. The great sword outperforms the great axe by half a point of damage every time it hits, right? So that means an extra point of damage every second hit. Now, whether that's significant or not, that's you know up for debate. And in in Dungeons and Dragons, like there's modifiers and stuff like that, so it doesn't really make it probably doesn't make that huge a difference. But objectively speaking, the great sword would be a better weapon than the great axe. All right, so that's the that's basically the whole thing. We'll just run it again. Let's see, so we test weapons test, great axe damage, great sword damage, great axe wins, running a thousand trials. Um, so we great axe win count 425, great sword win count 496. You see it's significantly more, and there's your average damage. So everything is there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and just see is there any way I can maybe make this a little bit uh, more streamlined. Alright, so what I could do is see like all these integers here. Right, I could just uh, put them all on one line, for instance. Like, so I could take this, okay, like, and separate them with commas, right? So that they're not all, right? So they're not all just like taking up a whole bunch of space. Oops, that should be a comma. Okay, there is something I would like to show you as well in this. Um, and it's pretty important actually, is what happens if you don't actually set um, one of these things to be zero to start. Okay, so let's say for instance, I put the total axe damage just like this. So I just created the variable, but I didn't actually uh, set it to be zero. Okay, we're gonna see what happens to the average. 
Okay, you can see the average for the total axe damage now has gone up to, I don't know, 2 times 10 to the 6. So like 200,000 or something like that, like that or 2 million. Um, yeah, it's quite a high number, right? Now, why did that happen? Okay, well, the reason why it happens is because when you declare a variable, the variable is given a spot in the RAM. Now, when, it, when a variable is released from the program, so when your program uh, stops running, like basically the RAM gets returned back to the system to use, but the RAM is cleaned. It doesn't actually wipe it clean. So it's kind of like you wrote something on a blackboard, and when you're done with it, you just walked away without without wiping it off. Now, the next time the variable comes, it gets created, it gets assigned a spot, but there's probably some random data from another program that was stored in there, and that's what gets us, that's what's sitting in there. So it's important to initialize the variables back to zero. Otherwise, you're going to get that junk data from old programs that's running on your on your code, okay? Or that that's assigned to your variables. All right. Similarly, here we could we could do the same thing to make things a little bit tighter. We can also get rid of uh, the test codes now since we don't actually need them. Okay. Um, just like this. And yeah, other than that, it looks pretty, pretty good. All right, we could throw in some documentation and stuff like that to say like what we're doing. So like, for instance, um, variables. All right, um, here we could say um, like first output. All right. Um, I'm not, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't expect you guys to um, to document every single thing. The, if you write it properly, the code should basically document itself, right? So here you can pretty much see what's what's happening here. All right, uh, running thousand trials. So again, code is kind of documenting itself, right? Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I don't really see much else. We can get rid of these empty spaces here, and that's pretty much the whole program. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully I found this to be quite helpful. Thanks anyways, and I'll see you next time.